Chinese researchers say a rhesus monkey they cloned has survived for two years thanks to a new technique. Previous attempts have either not led to live births or the offspring haven't survived more than a few hours. Critics say the suffering caused to animals by cloning isn't worth any potential benefits. Well, let's uh, speak now to Professor Robin Lovell Badge, who's head of the Laboratory of Stem Cell Biology and Developmental Genetics at the Francis Crick Institute. Thank you so much for joining us, Robin. We will uh, come to the ethics of this in a moment. Just first of all, how much of a breakthrough is it? Because uh, they've only had one life, live birth, haven't they? So how significant is this development? Um, well, first of all, it's always very difficult when you only have one of something. You can't determine in frequencies, so you don't know whether the, the method that they've developed, developed here is more efficient or not than, than previous procedures. Um, so they really need to have at least two to be able to give a, a rate of success. Um, but so there had been a, a number of previous attempts to clone uh, non-human primates, um, so macaques in particular, and different, there were different species of macaque was cloned in 2018. Again, very, it was a very inefficient process, only about uh, between one and two percent uh, of attempts worked. Uh, trying to clone the rhesus macaque, um, which is what this present study has been doing, um, has consistently met with no success at all in getting a live born animal to live, uh, more than a few hours, as you said. Um, why it's important to work with the rhesus macaques is because these are the type of non-human primate that's most often used in research. And so uh, we have a lot of information about them in other respects. And if you want to use non-human primates in research, which is closely allied to research on humans, then it makes sense to develop the, the, this type of macaque, the rhesus macaque, as a, uh, your model. The reason they want to do it is to be able to reduce variation between experiments. So scientists always want to control for variables. And having genetically different animals in an experiment always complicates things. And so the idea was to have genetically identical rhesus macaques that you then use in a variety of experiments to look at things which might be applied to humans. And Robin, just um, briefly, if we then turn to the ethics of this, the animal charity, the RSPCA, says that the suffering to the monkeys outweighs any benefit scientifically. Do you agree? Um, I think I do on this occasion. I don't always agree with them, but I absolutely do on this occasion. I think the number of animals used to, to in this case, generate uh, one uh, live-born animal that's lived for two years um, is sort of a bit unacceptable, actually. So it, it was 113 attempts in this experiment, as reported, but there had been many attempts previously. So if you add it all up, there's an, 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 many, many monkeys have been used um, mm. to get far. And only having one um, survival, survivor is not enough to do anything with. Yeah. Um, so. You need, if you, the whole idea is that you need I'm, to have multiple animals. I'm afraid we'll have to, to leave it there. Thank you so much, Professor Robin Lovell Badge, there. Do stay Thank with you. us here on.